God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and we're going to take a, a painting journey today. Uh, we're still in Ireland, and so I'm going to take you to a delightful uh, cottage and have you um, meet through my painting, Two Brothers. Um, but first of all, I want to talk about our last episode. We were in Athlone, Ireland, uh, along the Shannon River. And if you remember, uh, this is what it looked like, uh, the photograph of the painting that I was going to work from, the, the photograph um, of the place. It was hmm, just a photograph, needed some artistic license added to it. And so then uh, when, we, when we closed that show, then you could see how it was. It was laid in pretty well, but it was still kind of rough in a few areas. And so I took it back to my, my studio, and uh, my home studio, and there I put on some finishing touches. I really didn't have to do too much to it. Um, I, I did add quite a bit of color to the water. I wanted that water, I wanted you to have the feeling of that water as it was sparkling all these different shades and, and the, the light from the bridge was reflecting into the water and the sky, of course, made the water appear much bluer than it actually was. And the swans, the swans, they were delightful. They were right there coming right up to the edge, right along the, the, um, the walkway here and begging for breadcrumbs and things like that that we threw out to them. So it was a really a marvelous, marvelous day painting along the Shannon River. So that, is, that was uh, the completion of our, of our last episode. But now today, I'm really excited because I want to tell you about Tommy Conlon. Tommy Conlon and his brother, Patty, are two gentlemen farmers, and they live a few miles outside of Moat, Ireland. And they have lived in this cottage that you see in the photograph here um, for three generations. Tommy and his brother, Patty, were born in this cottage and they've never left it, they've never married, they're bachelor farmers, and they're also storytellers. Well, it doesn't show in the photograph, but they have the most enchanting red barn and garden, and so I was invited, along with a friend, there to paint one day, and I was busily painting and painting and painting, and every once in a while, Tommy would come out and he'd stand in the doorway like this and he'd kind of like look to see like, well, what, what, what are you doing? Uh, is it okay for me to come and see? You know, very, very sweet. The Irish brogue was so thick I could hardly understand it, but they were what two such lovely gentlemen and the stories they told me. But anyway, we only have an hour, so I better start painting. I want to get this all blocked in for you um, so that you can see it. I just have the, the drawing on here. And as you can see now, uh, here comes the lesson part. Um, as you can see, the, it's a thatched roof cottage. And because I was taking a photograph, the angle of perspective is very extreme. And that's what the camera does. It distorts reality. And so knowing that, I have adjusted this, my drawing, so that it would look like 
it actually looked when I was standing there looking at Tommy. The angles were not so extreme. You know, they were a little straighter. There's just not that much room for it to get that narrow that quickly. So I straightened out the angles a little bit, and I have Tommy standing here, and um, he's kind of like mm, looking, you know, like, what are you doing? When are you going to be done? So anyway, uh, without further ado here, I'm going to get busy. First thing that what I do, or what I like to do, is I like to draw in charcoal, and then I like to affix my drawing with yellow ochre acrylic. And then after that's dry, then I can wipe that off. Now that acrylic is permanently on there. And if you'll notice, I never work with, a, with a, an untoned canvas. I hate to work on a pure bare white canvas. So I like to work, you know, with a little background on there. So already kind of messed up. So first thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to lay in some of the dark that I see behind Tommy. Um, so that that will give me, here's my, like, where my darkest dark is going to be and my lightest light. So I'm going to make a nice dark using a little bit of my Payne's Gray and a little bit of my Alizarin Crimson. Whoops. Oh boy, I didn't put the Alizarin Crimson out. Hmm. That's not like me. That's one of my favorite colors. Well, we'll just improvise and use something else. Okay, mix a little green into that to warm it up a little bit. It's pretty dark back there. You can barely see anything. Alrighty, I'm just I'm just using the a regular palette. It's rather limited. I don't have a lot of colors on it. I prefer just to sort of keep it simple. I like a, a, I like a, a, a warm yellow and a cool yellow in my grayed yellows. And I like a, a warm green and a cool green and a warm blue, a warm blue here and a cooler blue. And this is just a, a cool red and this is some violet and that's my Payne's gray. The one that I don't have on here is my favorite color of all, and that's alizarin crimson. Some artists say that alizarin crimson is what they call a fugitive color, that it will disappear, you know, in years to come. I've never, I have paintings that are 40 years old, and my alizarin crimson hasn't disappeared yet, so I guess I'm pretty safe. Okay, now then, We'll just kind of get this in here. Now, I, as I was telling you, today is not about giving you a finished product, a finished painting. It's, this is a journey as I go across the canvas here, trying to get the, the darks where I want the darks the lights where I want the lights and the half tones where I want the half tones. It's, it's, it's really important because without this dark back here, I have no idea of how light to make my lights. And as they say, without the dark, there is no light. So there we go. Around Tommy's little hand there. There we go. He's such a sweet little guy. He has a glass eye. And um, I don't know, I'm not sure what happened, but why he would have that. But it's um, rather noticeable when you're talking to him and you, you have a little bit of a trou trouble, or I did anyway. I'm ashamed to confess. I had a little trouble not looking at the right eye, you know, the one that wasn't glass. But, oh well, we're all human. Now back in there is a table. And I'm going to tell you why that table's there in a little while. 
as soon as I get this laid in a little bit better, you're going to get a kick out of this. All right. So now then, maybe there is a, I think there's the hint of a chair back in here. I'll just put a little bit of a chair now then. These things are just little, little things that are just kind of showing up in the, you know, you probably can hardly see them, but I want, I want to suggest that there are things going on back in here. The inside of their cottage was amazing because it was filled with three generations worth of, of stuff. Right back over here where the back of the cottage is, is actually where Tommy and Patty were born. They never left this place. And when their mother was alive, you know, they took care of her. And she had all this lovely china and lace curtains in the window. And it's all still there, just like, just like it was. It's all still there, the beautiful lace curtains and in the windows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, uh, tell you about that a little bit later here. I want to just get this, this window in here. Okay. You know, this is, this is such a joy to be able to uh, share this, these journeys with you. This, this was really a special one. The whole trip to Ireland was just marvelous. But when these two gentlemen, you know, invited me to their farm to paint one day, it was so special. It was, you could, you know, really tell that they weren't used to having um, too much company. And um, the wood, they don't burn wood over there in Ireland. They burn peat, and so they had an old-fashioned, it really looked like a, um, a wooden stove or, an, or like a, elect, well, it looked more like an electric stove because it was white, but it burned peat, and that's what they cooked on, and this peat inside when they were sitting there and talking to me, this peat fire was just burning away, coming out of the out of the opening, you know, where the burner would be on the stove. Well here's this big fire coming out of there. And it's <clears throat> not maybe a foot away from from where Tommy's head is sitting and he's as he's sitting in his chair. And so we had the the we had the 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 stove and the fire, and then there was a chair and another chair with both both fellows sat there and they as they told me their stories and everything but it was i couldn't believe the peat that uh peat if you don't know what it is as as far as I understand it, it's something that is thousands of years old it's vegetation that is grown over and I guess decayed and then layers and layers of it have decayed through the centuries and it hardens and then they actually have peat fields where they harvest it and so that's what they that's what they were doing uh, they they harvest the, the peat and that's what everybody uses in Ireland to for their heat and for their cooking. Um, so it's, and it looks like, a, oh, you know what a presto log looks like? One of those round pressed wood things that you put in your fireplace? Kind of looks, it has the, the look of a presto log, only it's shaped more like in a brick because as they cut them, they cut them into bricks. So... And they burn like crazy. They burn really good. All righty. OK. 
Okay, and then this back here has got a little more brown to it. And I'm just kind of going around this and getting the, the, um, this is where the door jam is here. And then this is a little lighter here. So anyway, when it's around lunchtime, I guess, and I'm out there painting away, and pretty soon Tommy comes to the door, way here, and he says, it's lunchtime, come and eat lunch. Well, I'll tell you, two bachelors, um, and... I don't know. I was just, you know, like I was wasn't sure what they would fix, what they ha what he had fixed, and I felt that it was an, a great imposition to go and eat his food anyway. I mean, believe me, they're not rich; they're quite poor, and I felt it was a great imposition for me to go in there and eat their food, and that he'd even made this lunch for me was just amazing. But I went in and to my absolute surprise, here was the table all decked out in, uh, uh, with a nice tablecloth and beautiful china with a rose pattern on it. And the table was set perfectly, just as if I was like a queen or something. And he had made this marvelous salad, all fresh. I mean, the, the, the salad was so fresh, it was like he had just picked it, but it wasn't the right time of the year for him to have been able to go into his garden to pick these fresh vegetables, tomatoes and lettuce and and, and everything that he had in this salad. But it, but it was just so yummy. And he'd made this really nice sandwich and everything. And, and then he's running back and forth from this peat stove with the teapot, um, you know, making, uh, bringing me tea and things like that. And I said, well, well please sit down and join me. You know, and he says, "Oh no, Miss! Oh no, Miss! This is for you." Um, I don't know. It was just, it was so special. And I, I, I I've got this picture here, of of uh, the table and the lace curtains, and Tommy is bending over. He, I think he was putting butter on the table. Anyway, I I snapped this picture of him. I was just so flabbergasted at what he had done, you know, this beautiful luncheon. And the stories that they, that they told, um, the, two, the two brothers, we sat there after lunch with tea, and they had, a, they had a border collie dog, a black dog, and that dog just adored them. Dog was always right there. He sort of seemed to like Patty better, better than Tommy, but he was right there, and, and he, um, the two of them were telling me what it was like in the olden days, the olden days for them, you know. I guess it was quite a hard life because they didn't have modern machinery to, to farm with, so they had to do things the hard way. And as a matter of fact, their house still doesn't have indoor plumbing. Um, there's a cute little outhouse in the back that, his, that has a bright yellow door. They're really colorful, okay, very colorful. Their outhouse has a bright yellow door, and the barn is a brilliant red. 
uh, I, we couldn't get any redder. I couldn't make a red that red on my palette. Um, <laughs> they like color. That's, in, that's good. In, color in everything except for their dress. They're, they're, they, they dress pretty, pretty uh, calmly, or however you want to say it. Now, we see this here as something that is very, very white, okay? I don't want to make it that white. That is so stark and cold. As I travel across this canvas, I want to give you, the viewer, something that is mar more harmonious, that isn't jolting, that doesn't make you want to go brr, that looks like snow. So um, I'm not going to make that so white. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. But right now, I think I'll lay in the, uh, the straw. On that straw roof. So I'm going to put a darker um, color underneath. And I'm just going to kind of now, you have to bear with me here because I'm just going to scribble this in in the direction that I see it go. Because remember, today is all about just getting the canvas covered. It's not about detail. In an hour's time, we don't have enough time to do the detail. So I'm putting the undercoating of what the straw is going to look like. And hopefully I'll be able to get back to that to make some straw on there and show you what that looks like. But if I don't, then you'll, you'll know to tune in to the next show. And um, I need a bigger brush, Kitty. I always tend to have a tendency to work with this brush that's too small. I need to get in here and get this going. There we go. I don't know if you've been to Ireland or not, but you can just see so many different shades of green. It is so beautiful. The whole country is just gorgeous. You drive along these little country roads and you see these little Places like Tommy and Patty's house here, you know, these little cottages, stone cottages or stucco, whatever it was. And they're all, the yards are all surrounded with, with stones that they've picked from the fields to make the stone fences. Even the cattle and the sheep are kept in their, in their pasture by stone fences. Isn't that just unbelievable? You know, just a stone fence keeps them, keeps them in place. Where here we have to use electric fences and all kinds of things. I don't know, though. Maybe here we're using electric fences to keep people out instead of the cattle in. Who knows? They were telling me that places like theirs are being taken over and new houses um, are being built in their stead. And um, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of like when we, when we tear down a place, an old farm building or something like that, we tear it down and we put up a shopping mall or a condo or something like that. Well, that's kind of what's happening in Ireland too, of which is, is really a sad thing. So, uh, when I was there, uh, Ireland was um, undergoing a revolution, a technological revolution, in that they were really a very affluent country, doing very, very well uh, with technology, you know, the internet and uh, all these things that people have to play with now. And <clears throat> so um, it, it, uh, they, they were, they were gain, gaining wealth. People had wealth that had never had wealth before. And so you drive down through the countryside or on the, along the streets, 
and there would be people that would perhaps would be next to Tommy and Patty's place, and they'd have this big mansion. And I guess you see the same thing here, you know, but it just looks so out of place. You know, I just, I don't know. It'd be kind of nice if, I think, if all the mansions in the world could be in one district and all the people that wanted to live a more simple life could all just be in another area, but I guess they would call that segregation. There we go. That's another thought to think about. So anyway, I'm trying to mix up the nice color for this place. I'll probably add a little bit of light to it. I don't want it to be like, you know, um, not white because it was white. But for right now, I think I'm just going to put some of this on it. Oh, that doesn't look warm enough, Kitty. Let's get some warmth in there. Oh, if you could see the mess I'm making on this palette. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I get out of this one okay, I'll be really making a miracle. It'll be a miracle here. But maybe it'll work, maybe it'll work. <clears throat> There's always more paint to add, right? Let's keep working it. Two yellow. Alrighty. I'm gonna scrape that off. I'm gonna put a little bit more um, blue back in here and hope I don't make green because I have yellow on my palette. And if I put blue and yellow, make green, I don't want green. I want a nice warm gray color. All right, let's see here. Do we have it now? That's a little bit better. What does it need, Kitty? I always talk to myself. I don't know. Sometimes it helps, and sometimes I just get more confused. What can I say? There we go, a little more white. No, yeah, that's good enough. We'll just smear this around, and, and we'll come back to it later and add some. My idea right now is I want to get to Patty. I don't want to leave him hanging there with no paint on him. So that's a shadow up in there that is the, that is being cast by the, um, by the thatch roof. So there we go. That's quite a bit darker, but when I add uh, a little bit to that, that it'll be okay. It's okay to have the different colors in there. Makes it have a little personality. really don't have to paint things exactly as you see them. That's the part, the beautiful part about being an artist is you can paint what you feel, how you want it to look. This is working pretty good, I think. Yeah, there we go. Probably looks pretty yellow, but if it's not right, why? I'll fix it later. Sometime I'm going to have the paint mixed up before I come, but I don't know. Then, it, you know, for me, as, an, as the artist, 
It's not fun to figure out all the answers before I get to the studio here. It's more fun to shoot from the hip and give you something that maybe not be, it might not be exactly um, correct, but at least you see the, the journey, the journey of traveling across the canvas and some things you have to um, adjust and some things you, sometimes you surprise yourself and you say, oh, I love that. And then you're all happy with yourself. You know, so I don't think I want to come to the, to the television, to my studio here in the television station because I don't want to be all prepared and cut and dried and know exactly what I'm going to do. It's more fun this way. I hope you agree. <laughs> I really hope you agree. <laughs> There we go. We're getting that in there pretty good. Okay. Okay, and then down below here, this green that they have that is in shadow here, they, um, they have that going across the bottom there of the building before it meets the, the um, driveway. The ham sandwich must be getting close to lunchtime. I keep thinking about that lunch and how gracious he was, and how he just waited upon me like I was a visiting queen. I just was, I was so touched by that. I, but anyway, and the ham, oh my goodness, I don't think we have ham like that here. It was so good. There we go, okay. Now, that covered up a lot, of, a lot of area in a fast amount of time. That's good. That's good. Okay, so now we'll get that brush back, and we'll put the, that bluish green in. Trying something uh, a little different this time. I usually get the... Um, Cerulean blue comes in a hue um, of which is kind of a synthetic color and it's much more inexpensive than the true cerulean blue. So I want you to know though, for this show I splurged and I bought a tube of the true cerulean blue. And it's a very lovely color. I like it. Now I'm mixing it with all kinds of other things, so <laughs> you're not going to have a chance to really see, to see what I'm talking about here, but maybe we can put a stroke of it here or there. Okay. <clears throat> now we have this coming across here. And there again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to really rough this in fast because I want to show you, I want to get Patty on there. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Tommy, not Patty. Okay. There we go. Okay, now a little bit in the window. And that's darker there in the window box right here. 
because it's in shadow. And that's quite a bit lighter, so we'll take a little bit of light and add around the flower pots that are sitting on the window ledge. Okay, and now we'll take some more of the blue and put on the front of it here. There we go, and we'll fix that up later. I have a feeling that line isn't very straight, but oh well. Okay, maybe it needs to be just a tad darker up in here. I know it does. There we go. because that's in the, in the shadow there. I'm just going to go ahead and throw in those little red uh, pots there. No, they're not red pots. It's the flowers that are red. Ooh, okay. The pots are a dark green, very dark green. So I'm mixing my blue with my green to make the pots. Here's a big one here. And then they do have some red flowers in them, but I'm not going to put those in right now because I, I have to put the the white on first. If I put the red on, then I can't put white on because the white will bleed, will pick up the red, and it won't stay white. So this white window frame is going to have to stay like that for now. All right, and then as we're going into Tommy's, we'll, we want to show a little bit of atmosphere as we're going into here, into his place, to show that, that there is some atmosphere in there that it's not all dark. In other words, the light is actually coming in. So we put that on. And I think up here on the top, we're just going to come in with a little purple and a little bit of the black and make this really, really dark. There we go. And then we can see the atmosphere a little bit better as it's going in there. Okay. So now then, uh, let's start on Tommy. Tommy's got some nice brown pants on. I think they call these fellows gentlemen farmers because even when they were out farming, I have a hunch that this is pretty much how they were dressed. See here, we need a brown or brown. There we go. There's something that's a little richer looking. Mixing that brown with my sap green and my cad red light. I want to try to get a nice, beautiful, rich, burnt sienna 
um, for the brown in his, in Tommy's pants. All right, so there we go. Whoops, I should have gone behind there. There's a little um, space there uh, in between there that is white. Let me get a little brush there and come in there and fill that. No, uh, well, yeah, I guess, let me see there. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Why would that be white? This is coming down unless that's just a little bit of the door. Maybe that's just a little bit of the door there. All right. Okay, now get over here and come on down. Now these pants have got wrinkles in them and things like that, but we're just going to get them on there. And then we'll come in and make the little wrinkle coming up this way. There's one here. A little break above the shoe here. It's coming this way. A little bit of light on this side right here. And I'm, so I'm because that's the the, the house, um, or the reflection of the house. Um, I'm taking some of the house color to make some of my lights here. Okay, that looks pretty good for the pants. The sweater's a real dark um, green, a cool, very cool green. And you better believe it's Irish wool, too. Tommy, down here on the bottom, is kind of rounded. He's a smaller man in the sense that his you know, dark shadows coming up here, uh, in the sense that his little shoulders are quite narrow, uh, but through the years, um, he's developed a little bit of a tummy on him. And so that's what we're seeing there. So we've got to show that because that's part of his persona. That's who he is. Okay. And now we're going to go with a nice warmer green and make that sweater show up a little bit more. Okay, now I'm working, trying to work fast because I want to get this um, on here for you so that you can see, have an idea of where this is going. Alrighty. And this is coming around like this. And then there's a kind of a pattern on the sweater that sort of goes like that. And then there's a it buttons. And let's see here. We want to finish this arm a little dark right in here. And then the arm is coming. And that's coming down there. Okay, and then this arm is coming over here. All right, and then he's got 
some nice blue, a nice blue, very crisp, clean looking blue shirt on. And let's see there and there. And then this has got a little darker shadow here and here to show that the he's got the shirt on. There now we'll take the wipe out. And we'll wipe out some of this blue that's right in here, that's in his face here. Okay, there we go. Now then, I'm gonna mix up a flesh color and I'm just gonna base in his, um, his face in a, a, a flesh color. I'm not gonna go for, for any detail now. You'll see, you'll see the detail um, at the next, at the beginning of the next show, um, of the next episode. So be sure and catch the next show after this one because that's where you'll see all of the refinement that has been done on Tommy. Um, put a little green in here. I like to mix either a little bit of green in the flesh or a little bit of blue. Here I'm, I'm picking a warmer color and putting it in. And I'm going to just hope that that's going to work. Uh, is this the brush I had? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now here, we're going to come right in here. And we're going to paint his face. All one color. One value, one color, one shape. And we're gonna do the same thing with his hands. Hands are darker. Okay, and then that hat is kind of a kind of a violet like um grayed violet so already You should have seen these fellows garden. They had the most, I mean, it was kind of wild and natural. It wasn't all like planned like, like we would do here. It was just beautiful and natural and just the most gorgeous flowers blooming everywhere. And I, I didn't even, we were so fortunate because we didn't even know what the weather was gonna be like when we got there. And because typically they have a rainy season just like we do, and the weather was the weather was beautiful. We had sunshine almost every day, and every place that we went, the people were warm and friendly. It's just a marvelous place to visit, a marvelous place to take a journey to. There's his little shoes. Now, okay, he's coming. Now then, we're going to take the big brush again, and we're going to come and put in the, because we're running out of time, we're going to come in and I have the nicest cameraman. And he always has to give me these little, he holds up a sign for me, okay? He holds up this sign and it'll say 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 
10 minutes. I just got the 10 minute signal. Now, can you tell me where the last 50 minutes went? I have no clue. But anyway, back to this. So, here we go. All right, and tell me you're going to get a little messed up because I'm hurrying now. I want to make this a little bit I want to make this a little bit darker um, next to the building. Oh, that's probably too dark. I'm going to have to soften that a little bit. And then as it comes out, I want it to be a little lighter and I'm out of white so I think I'm really in trouble here. It looks like I'm getting running out of time here about the same time that I'm running out of white paint. <laughs> so that's kind of a good thing, huh? There we go and we'll just kind of scrub in the, the street there or the drive. It's not really a sidewalk, it's just Okay, we've pretty much got the, the canvas covered, um, of which is a good thing. That's what I wanted to do today. And um, let me see. I think what I'm going to do is I just want to show you what that thatched roof would look like a little bit more here while we have a couple of extra minutes here. <clears throat> It's all different colors of, of um, hay or straw. Straw, I guess it is. So it's going to be kind of like this. Let me see if I can make it across the canvas on that. There will be some dark spots in it. And some of it comes comes down a little bit more. It's really kind of kind of cool. I had never seen that before I went to Ireland. And you know they they have to. I asked them about their roof, and they said that they have to. They get on the roof. These two elderly gentlemen get on the roof and put more hay up there or straw when it starts to leak. So, but I always wondered what in the world keeps the straw from blowing away? You know, I mean, is it must be some kind of, of like a, um, there must be some sort of like, I don't know, like, like a glue or not glue, but something that they adhere it with, I would think. I just got the five minute signal. You know what that means. So, okay. All right, so that gives us a little bit of an idea of what the straw is going to look like. Um, and it just kind of comes down, and, and it's actually um, even tinier than that, and some of them are even bolder as far as the color is concerned and some of them are grayer. You almost need a feather brush for this. Okay, but that gives you the idea of the straw. And, um, okay, I have a couple minutes left here. Let me see, uh, and I'm not gonna promise anything because I don't do that well under pressure, but I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can just give you an idea Here's some hair, it might would be whiter. There's some hair and there's some hair. Okay. 
Okay. And And he has rosy cheeks. Now, I shouldn't have started this, guys. I'm messing poor Tommy up. I'm making him look like a little monster here. That's OK, Tommy. I'll get back to you, and I will fix you, and you'll look handsome. There we go. You'll look handsome when I'm done with you, kiddo. There. At least now you get a little bit of an idea. I want that one eye to be bigger because it was. That was, of course, the glass eye. That I didn't know which way to look. All righty, just a little bit. We need just a little bit for that smile, the big smile that he had. And a little bit of light for a little shape of a nose. This has been so much fun today, sharing this with you. I hope that you have been enjoyed it as much as I have, because to tell you about this adventure, this journey, and share it with you has been very special to me. I'm, I'm really glad that you joined me. And once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish. This is Painting Journeys. Every episode, we journey to a new place. Be sure and catch the next one because I'm not sure where we're going to go yet, but you'll like it, I'm sure. So come along. Thank you, and bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.